this morning by singing the solid rock.
Good morning. Thank you for joining us for our worship service this morning. I'm glad you're here. We're glad you're meeting with us online. It's good for us to be together to worship God today. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and I want to remind us all that we are invited to come boldly to the throne of grace so that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let's pray together. Our gracious Father, we thank you this morning for the wonderful and the awesome privilege that we have of calling upon the name of the Lord. We thank you that the God we serve is on his throne. He's in control. He's aware of everything that's going on in our lives and in our world today. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for knowing the answers. We thank you that none of this has caught you by surprise. And we're so grateful this morning that as we call upon you, you are aware of our needs. We've got a lot of needs that we want to talk to you about today. But, Lord, you're already aware of those, and we give you praise for that this morning. Lord, we bring to you many needs. We're asking you that, that you would reach out to hurting people and, and hurting families. Some of them are a part of our, our regular congregation here in Mexico, and we're asking you today that you would reach out to them, that you would minister to them, and, and give them the special help that they need during these difficult days. Lord, we, we pray for businesses right here in Mexico and, and across our country and even around the world who are, who are losing business. We pray for business owners that are struggling to know what is the right thing to do and struggling to keep their businesses open. We ask you, Lord, that you would go to them and that you would give wisdom and that you would minister to people and help people to be looking away to Jesus. Lord, we pray for people who are being laid off or perhaps soon will be laid off. And we're asking you, Lord, that you would minister to their needs. You, you know about the needs, Lord. And you know that there are a lot of people around us who haven't saved up for, for difficult times. And we're asking you, Lord, that you would meet their needs and that you would help them in every way that they need your help. We pray for our government, Lord. We ask that, that you would give them wisdom, the people in, in responsibilities, Lord. We pray that you will give them wisdom to know what to do next and, and the right course to take. And we ask you, Lord, that, that you would keep our people safe. And we pray for our military, Lord. We ask that you would watch over them and, and keep them in your care. We pray for, for people who are fearful, and perhaps all of us are, are stressed extra at this time, and we're asking you, Lord, that, that you would just minister your grace into our hearts and lives, that you will touch us. We pray for, for churches. Lord, most, if not all, churches are having to change the way they do their services, and some don't have the capabilities to, to minister online, but we pray that you would help churches. We pray for pastors. We pray that you would grant them special wisdom for these difficult days. We pray for leadership teams. We pray for Christians in general. And we're asking you, Lord, that you would reach out and minister and give the special help that's needed in each case. Lord, we pray for our church family. We ask you, Lord, that, that you would help us as a church family to know how to touch other people as, as people are struggling all around us. And we pray that you would keep our church family safe and that you would you would stop this virus, Lord, not just for our church, but Lord, if you would stop this virus and, and Lord, may things somehow soon get back to, to somewhat of, of, a, of a normal process. But, oh, God, in all of this, we pray that you would use your grace to draw us to yourself and that you would help us to come together as Christians and, and help unsaved people to come to Jesus. And Lord, in difficult times, you have promised that if your people would call upon you, that you would restore. And so today we're asking you for that kind of help. Lord, we pray that you would reach out to sinners. We've been praying for, for several of them that we know. And, and Lord, there are others that are praying as well. And we're asking you, Lord, that you would convict sinners, that you would help them to realize that it's an urgent matter to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And we pray this morning that the Spirit of God would go to everybody who is, who is a part of this service, whether it's in person or online. And we pray that you would minister to us and minister to our needs. 
Lord, there's some missionaries today who are in dangerous parts of our world. They're in danger because of the virus and because of lack of medical facilities. And, and some of them are in danger because they're in hostile areas. And we're just asking you this morning that you would be with them and that you would bless them and help them and keep them in your care. We pray that you would bless this local church, that you would give us wisdom as we work in our community, that you will help us to know how to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ as we go about our day. We pray that you would guide us, Lord, in everything that we do. We pray that you would bless this service this morning with your presence and that you would honor your name in everything that we do. We pray these things in the holy and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Obviously, we're not receiving an offering this morning, but if you want to keep up with your tithes and offerings, we invite you to, to send them in by mail. The, the address is 1205 West Boulevard Street, Mexico, Missouri, 65265. 1205 West Boulevard, Mexico, Missouri, 65265. 65265. If you would wish, you can go to coghmexico.com and there's an opportunity for you to give online there as well. For all of our regular church people, let me just remind you that our revival services that were scheduled for next week have been postponed. If you're interested, in receiving emails of devotionals and or other information from the pastor, please get your email address to me. I want to keep in touch with you. If you're new to our church, you can also contact me by Facebook or from our website. And again, that is coghmexico.com. And we'd be happy to hear from you. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of our worship service this morning. We have a special song now. Christ forgave you, 
so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which ye also are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. We've been studying through the book of Colossians, and it seems so appropriate to me that we would arrive at this passage of scripture for today. It doesn't matter how old the Bible is. The Apostle Paul, writing almost 2,000 years ago, wrote a message that is absolutely relevant to us today. Yeah. God's like that, isn't he? The Bible tells us he knows the end from the beginning, so he knew what was going to be happening, happening right around today. And, and, and here we have this passage of scripture that, that speaks to our situation today. There's some things that we need to notice, and like I usually say, you, you really ought to keep your Bible open so that you can follow along with what we're talking about this morning. In, in verse 10, we didn't read it this morning, but in verse 10, Paul said, you have put on the new man, and, and there he was suggesting to us, he was stating to us that as Christians, we have received a new nature when we let Jesus come into our lives. And then in verse 12, he takes us to a higher place in our Christian lives. And not only have we professed a relationship with Jesus, but now he is saying to us, put on, therefore. And he, he goes on and talks to us about being the elect or the chosen of God. We're holy, we're dedicated, we're conformed to him, we're beloved, we're, we're beloved by God, we're set apart by God for Christian service. And so I want, us, I want us to notice some things about this passage of Scripture this morning. I want us to notice, first of all, that Paul tells us to put on Christ-like attitudes. What an opportunity we have as Christians living in a crisis to demonstrate the spirit of Christ. So he tells us in verse 12 that we're to put on attitudes, we're we're to put on Christ-like attitudes toward others. Talks about vows of mercy and kindness. And, and the, those two terms really are expressing the same thing. And the message is that as Christians, it doesn't matter what our other circumstances are. We're supposed to respond with an attitude of Christ-likeness, an attitude of kindness. But he not only talks about putting on Christ-like attitudes toward others, in verse 12, he also talks about putting on Christ-like attitudes toward ourselves. He talks about humbleness of mind and meekness. And, and, and you know, there's a, there's a tendency in our world today for people to overemphasize their own importance. It's not that we're not important. We are. We're important to God. But there's a tendency for us to kind of get the idea that, that we're kind of it was talking with a, a friend on, on the phone yesterday, and, and, and he's, he's got some very serious learning disabilities, and, and his whole world revolves around him. But it's not just people with learning disabilities that have that problem. Some people seem to think that they're the center of everybody's world. Jesus says that the Christ-like attitudes are to put on humbleness of mind and meekness. So Paul goes on here and he tells us in verses 12 and 13 that we're also supposed to put on Christ-like attitudes toward the difficult. Uh, obviously, none of, none of us ever would be around anybody that, that's difficult to get along with. But just in case we ever are, let's keep in mind that Paul tells us that we're supposed to practice long-suffering and patience. We're to be forbearing one another and forgiving one another. And in fact, Paul tells us that we're to forgive like Christ forgave. And if you ever have trouble wondering what, what, it is, what, what was Paul 
talking about that. How did Christ forgive? Just go back a chapter to chapter 2 and verse 12. And there Paul talks about us. Be, um, about Christ forgiving, and that's the wrong verse, but but Paul talks about us, it's chapter 12, verse 13, and you being dead in your sins and, and uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses. One of the significant things about the way Jesus forgives us is he doesn't keep bringing it, bringing it up Again, I looked it up on, on YouTube this week. And there's there's an old gospel song. I don't hear it very much anymore. But there's an old gospel song that talks about this Christian who's struggling with things in their in their past. And they, they keep bringing them back to God and, and reminding God about how sorry they are for their sins. And in the chorus, the response is from God. And, the, and God responds, what sins are you talking about? Because God's forgiven them. He's washed them away. And if we're going to forgive like Christ forgives, then we're not going to remember those sins either. We're not going to keep on bringing them up for people. Forgiveness is characteristic of Christians. And so Paul tells us in this passage of Scripture to put on Christ-like attitudes. But as we go along in this passage, we get to verse 14. And in verse 14, Paul tells us to promote Love is interesting the way he says it here because he says, above all these things, put on charity or put on love. So it's love God, it's love his people, it's love the people that Jesus died for. That's everybody. It's put on charity, put on love. Let, let love be your motivation. Let love be visible. Let your love touch people. That's interesting that, that that would come up on a on a day like today. But but before we get to too much of that, let's remind ourselves that Jesus touched and healed lepers. And and let's also notice that while we need to be careful with physical touching these days, we can touch people in many other ways than physical. I think it's kind of neat that, that there have been a couple of people that have contacted me almost every day this week just asking, is there anything you need? See, they're touching me. They're touching by text message, touching by phone calls. And you and I can do that in a world that's hurting. We can, we can still touch people. And then Paul tells us that love is the bond of perfectness. That is to say, love is the uniting principle of completeness. Love is what holds us together. And love, love for God and love for each other and love for our world is what's going to see us through the crisis that we're dealing with right now. And so Paul tells us to put on Christ-like attitudes. He tells us to promote love. And in verse 15, he tells us to practice peace. Let the peace of Christ Rule in your hearts. Peace is a difficult word. It's tough to describe. Sometimes we've, we've thought of peace as, as the absence of war, but, but peace is so much more than that. In fact, a person can be at peace and can be controlled by peace even when there's war going on all around us. Peace is a confident rest in the hands and will of God. Peace is knowing that God is in control, even when it seems like our part of the world is out of control. And let me say it again. God knew about our present circumstances, our present crisis, long before it happened. It didn't catch him by surprise. Nothing about the present changes God's purposes for us. Romans 8.28 still says, All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. It hasn't changed. It's not going to change. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 says, And still says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. I think it's interesting. The another way of understanding that verse is to say our temporary easy pressure is polishing us 
and helping us get ready for eternity in heaven. I think it's significant that we think about that for a little while this morning because the reality is that this crisis that we're in, as inconvenient and as unsettling as it has been for, for about the whole world, is temporary. And in the light of eternity, it'll be just a little blip on the timeline. One of these days will be past. And then I remembered Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8 where the scripture reminds us of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. God made provision for us before he created the world. So Paul talks to us here about putting on Christ-like attitudes. He talks to us about promoting love. He talks to us about the practice of peace. And a part of the practice of peace is to understand that peace is is a product of surrender. When we've surrendered ourselves to God, when we've surrendered our ownership of ourselves to God, we belong to Him. And when we belong to Him, what happens to us is no longer of the greatest importance because we belong to God. And God cares very deeply about us and about our eternal best interests. When we have surrendered ourselves to God, pleasing Him is our priority, and keeping us is His priority. Yes. So peace is a product of surrender, but peace is also a product of our relationship with Jesus. Jesus said to His disciples in John chapter 14, verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Somebody counted it up and found 365 times in the Bible where the message comes through, fear not, let not your heart be troubled. It's one for every day of the year. I know. It's leap year, so we need one more. And if you'll read your Bible, you'll find it in there someplace. Not in those words, but you'll find it in there. Jesus went on and still in John chapter 14, verse 27, he said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And I don't know if you caught it or not, but if, if you have your Bible open, if you have a red letter edition of your Bible, look at John 14 and notice that almost all of the words in this chapter were spoken by Jesus. But notice also that Jesus was speaking at a time when the disciples were hurting very deeply. And then let's remind ourselves that these messages from Jesus applied not only to the disciples 2,000 years ago, but they, to, they apply to us today. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. Peace I leave with you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace becomes then a stabilizing force in our lives. It becomes a guiding principle in the heart. And the message that, that Paul is expressing to us here in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, is whatever disturbs your peace ought to be stopped. Let the peace of God umpire in your heart. The idea is if something's disturbing the peace on the inside, then it's our responsibility to try to find out what that is. Yes. And here are some of the ways you can do that. You can ask yourself, if something's disturbing my peace, does it violate God's word? And look at verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And so it's it's the word that becomes our guideline. Are you struggling with fear? God's message is fear not. Let not your heart be troubled. 365 times in the Bible. God's message is don't be afraid. And my experience this week has been that despite the fear and negativity in the news, God's peace has been real in my heart. I've been, 
I've been just kind of interrupted as I've gone about life and, and suddenly noticed that, that with all of this stuff going on around us, there's peace on the inside. Let the peace of God rule, umpire, arbitrate in your life. And after peace comes publishing in verse 16. Publish the word. Let it live in you richly. Let the, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly and always let it dwell in you. Jesus taught that what's on the inside shows up on the outside. Matthew chapter 15, verse 18, Jesus said, Those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. And so Jesus said, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let it live in you. Let it dwell in you. Never forget, the word of God is living. It's alive. And it can be in us. We studied about it a few weeks ago in chapter 1, verse 27 of Colossians. Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's the living word living in us, in you, in me. So it's published the word. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, abundantly. And let the word of Christ dwell in you in wisdom. Notice it's important that we practice what we preach. It's important that we preach and practice the Word of God in context. It's not twisting it to suit our ideas or opinions, but it's speaking the truth in love, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. But it's interesting that when Paul said speaking the truth in love, he wasn't talking just about talking. He's talking about doing, about being, about walking in truth. And Christians in times like these need to be Christ-like. The best way our world can see Jesus today is by looking at us. And so we live in integrity. We live the gospel. We live like Jesus. We live in hope. Paul talks about teaching and admonishing one another. And let's remember that God has this in control. And you and I are responsible to help each other. But wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be wonderful if we spent as much time sharing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs as we spend worrying about the virus? But those who have grace in their hearts are assigned the responsibility of sharing that grace with others. And so Paul summarizes the passage that we've read together this morning in verse 17 by saying, Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Notice that he talks to us about practical living in verse 17. It's focused living. Whatever you do, living focused on serving Jesus. Whatever you do. It's helpful living because serving Jesus includes serving others. It's praiseful living because he talks about giving glory to God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son. And the message of Scripture is telling us today that you and I as Christians can live for Jesus. We can reflect Jesus in what we are doing today by living like He lived. By demonstrating His attitudes, by practicing His peace, by putting our relationship with Jesus in the practice. And let us be challenged today to keep on serving Jesus and letting others see Jesus in us. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much for the privilege of being together to worship you today.
We thank you for all who have joined us online. And we ask you, Lord, that, that you would somehow take our efforts at worshiping you and that you would minister the grace of God to the hearts and lives of the people who are listening. Lord, if there are people out there who are listening to us today and, and, and sensing a, a, some kind of a spiritual need, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would help them to respond in, in some way by phone or by text or by email, but to get in touch with somebody that can help them know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I pray that you help all of us to be able to live like Christians in this present circumstance. I pray that you will guide our lives, that you will keep us in your care, that you will go with us as we, as we go about whatever sense of normalcy we can. And I pray above everything else that you would help us to make it to heaven, whatever it costs. And I pray these things in the holy, powerful, peaceful name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.